All right, guys. So today we are going to go over um, how to combine like terms. So this is something that hopefully you remember from middle school, and it'll be just a quick review. Okay, but really quick, just to go over an expression. An expression is a mathematical phrase that contains numbers, variables, and operators. Okay, so we're going to kind of label this expression down here, and we're going to do it together. And this 12 right here, that's obviously a number, but I want us to get in the habit of calling that a constant. So anything that's added or subtracted in an expression without a variable attached to it is a constant. Okay, so any number without a variable is a constant. Now, six is also obviously a number, but it's attached to a variable, so we call that a coefficient. Okay, x is obviously our variable. If you remember from middle school, all letters in expressions are variable. So I'm going to change this to kind of fit more of what we're talking about. And um, just in case you forgot what the operator was, it's the plus sign. But they contain constants, variables, and coefficients. So that's kind of the working definition that we're going to use as we go through this, okay? So when you're thinking about what do you notice about the two terms above, I want you to take a minute and kind of think about that to yourself. So take a minute and pause the video and think about what do you notice? So now that you've paused, you might have noticed that 6 is negative. That 6 and 12 are both multiples of 6. And you might have noticed that there's no equal sign. So that's the big difference, okay? An expression does not have an equal sign. If there is an equal sign, that is an equation. So expressions have no equal signs. Equations have equal signs. So now we're going to look at this table down here. And we are going to talk about something called like terms. Okay. So in expressions, terms can be classified as like and unlike. And basically what that means is if they have the same letter attached to them, they are like terms. If they have the same variable, they are like terms. So looking at our first example here down in this table, I have 8C, 16, negative 8C, and negative 16B. So my like terms are going to be 8C and negative 8C. So even though 16 and negative 16 both have a 16, that does not mean they are like terms because they do not have the same variable. So our positive 16 has no variable and our negative 16 has a variable B attached to it. So they are not like terms. But 8C and negative 8C both have C's attached, making them like terms, okay? Same thing for this second one. Negative 12X and 12X are going to be our like terms here. This 12 over here by itself does not have a variable, so it does not have any like terms. But since both of these 12Xs have the variable X, attached to them, they are like terms, okay? And looking at the third example, we have no like terms there because I have 9y, 5z, and 9w. And if you look, none of them have the same variable attached to them. So they are not like terms, okay? So I want you to pause the video here, and I want you to do the rest on your own, okay? 
So now that you've paused, I'm just going to go through the rest of them. Check your answers against mine. So on this one I just did, I want to talk to you guys about it. So if you look, I put just B. So even though B has no coefficient, it is still a like term to 4B and 9B. So when thinking about like terms, you're not focused on the numbers or the coefficients. You are focused on the variables, okay? So the variables have to match. If the variables match, they are like terms no matter what the coefficient is, okay? And on this last one, 0 and negative 8 are actually going to be our like terms. So if two numbers both do not have coefficients or they are both constants, they are also like terms. So matching two numbers that both have no variable is the same thing as matching two numbers that have the same variable, okay? So constants are also like terms because they have no variable. So only like terms can be combined. And we're going to look at kind of like a visual representation of this. So the Robinson family orders snacks at the state fair. They bought the following drinks, which are going to be represented with a D. Pizza will be represented with a P. Ice cream cones will be represented with a C. So I'm going to go ahead and label those with the appropriate variable. And I'm just going to write it out full. I'm not going to simplify it at all. So that looks very long and convoluted, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure out how many P's I have. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to write that as 5P, okay? Because I have five P's, so I'm going to write 5P. Now I'm going to count how many D's I have. I've got one, two, three. So I'm going to write that as 3D. And lastly, I'm going to count how many C's I have. I've got one, two. So I'm going to write that as 2C. So you can see that that's, this down here is way less complicated than this up here. This is it's easier to write. It's easier to read. It is more user friendly and it is simplified. Okay. So the whole point of combining like terms is to simplify your expression, okay? So if on a quiz you see a question and it says simplify and it gives you an expression, you're going to immediately think, okay, can I combine any like terms? That should be the first thought that you have, okay? So I'm going to do some examples down here and then you guys are going to do some on your own. So for number one, I've got 7a minus 6 plus 8a. And when I do these, I like to rewrite them so all my variables are next to each other. You by no means have to do that, okay? If you don't want to do that, you do not have to. I am just telling you that it will make you make way fewer mistakes and it'll make it easier for you, okay? So my 7a plus my 8a, and I just moved that minus 6 to the end over there. And that is going to give me 15a minus 6. Looking at number three over here, I'm going to do the same thing. So I've got 20C plus 10C. That's going to give me 30C. And then I have 8D minus 5D. So one thing I want to tell you is when you're combining like terms, you pretend like that operator is kind of attached to that coefficient, okay? 
So that five has to be a minus five. I could not add that five. It has to stay a minus, okay? I got 8D minus 5D, which gives me 3D. So I'm going to have 30C plus 3D here. And for number two, I just went ahead and did that one. So 20B minus 12, you can see it already had them in the right order there for me. So take a minute now and do the rest of these on your own. If you want to skip the one with fractions, that's fine. But I would like you to push yourself and try the ones with decimals. So pause the video and do those right now. Okay, now that you've paused, I'm going to let the video play while I work out the rest of the example problems. Just 